You guys, I'm about to officiate my best friend's wedding. I'm probably gonna throw up. Hey guys, Hello Bella here, and in this video, I'm gonna be giving you my tips for officiating a wedding. I just had the pleasure of officiating my best friend's wedding, and everything went really well. I wanted to kind of talk about the specifics involving officiating a gay wedding and also officiating a secular wedding, just meaning that there aren't any religious components involved. So we're gonna get into everything that I learned in preparation for the wedding and kind of the tips that I used to make it the best possible. They were doing an elopement, so it was a small wedding, so we didn't have an audience. So that was kind of nice for me as the officiant because I had never done it before. But I think that overall, you know, most weddings flow similarly. There's pretty much a formula to weddings that, you know, they have a beginning, middle, and end, and there are certain things that you look for in every wedding. And we're gonna go over that in this video. So this is not state specific, but in Alabama, there are no real requirements to officiate a wedding. So if there are requirements in your state, you might need to look into that. For us, it's just as simple as showing up and doing it, but I know that other states may do it differently. So for me, I didn't need to get ordained or anything like that. So we could skip that step, um, but which was kind of nice because, you know, I didn't really have to go through the trouble of doing all of that. So obviously if your friends or family has asked you to officiate their wedding that means that they know and like and trust you to do the ceremony and that they think that you'll do a good job at it and so what that means basically to officiate a wedding is more or less you're just kind of getting everyone through the ceremony you're kind of like team captain or you know leading the ceremony through and making sure that everything flows properly you know knowing when to do what and leading the brides or leading the grooms in order to um, you know go through the ceremony in the correct order the first thing that I would recommend you do as the is to sit down with the couple and kind of get a feel for what they actually want. What do they not want? Do they want to use their full names? Do they just want to use their first name? Do they want to, you know, have vows? Are they doing their own vows? Are they doing um, prepared vows? And, you know, kind of hash out some things like that in a conversation with them. Ask them if they have a favorite poem that they want you to read. Ask them if there's anything that, you know, in a traditional wedding that they might want you to leave out. I know that a lot of people, you know, don't necessarily like the verbiage in certain wedding ceremonies. So, you know, for us, we were able to take some of that out and make it more practical for the brides that were getting married. I think most couples prefer a shorter ceremony. Um, it's already going to be a long, stressful day for them. More than likely, they're taking pictures, they're greeting family. Our ceremony was only about five to ten minutes long, and they did do their own vows that they prepared. So, I mean, overall, it wasn't a super long ceremony. We actually just kind of went out into um, the backyard of the venue they had a little area for us to do it and we all were able to kind of stand around and do it pretty quickly and then afterwards we had dinner and they took a bunch of pictures and things like that so um, short ceremony is usually preferred especially um, you know if you're not doing a lot of friends and family there's really no reason for a long ceremony so I would err on the side of doing like a five to ten minute ceremony. One tip I have for you is to smile and pause because people are going to be taking pictures and the brides are also taking everything in. They're taking in everything that you're saying. So if you speak too quickly, it's hard for them to, you know, keep up with what's going on, especially in those moments where they have to repeat after you. I would strongly recommend that you only give them a few words at a time because when you're nervous, it's very hard to retain a lot of information. So make sure that you speak clearly and that you speak slowly. I'm really bad about speeding through when I talk about something, especially, you know, if I'm trying to get through it. So I had to be very mindful during that ceremony to kind of slow down and pause and give some time to, you know, kind of just sort of take pictures. You know, there's usually a photographer taking pictures of everything, so they don't want you to speed through that process either. And you will be in some of the photos as the officiant. So, you know, it's important to kind of smile and look happy whenever you are doing your reading or whatever you're using to, um, you know, read out your ceremony. Speaking of what you use to do the ceremony, I don't recommend doing like an iPad or an iPhone. I recommend getting like a black or brown book, something solid that looks good in photos because, um, you know, you want it to look classy. You want it to look um, really as best as it can for the pictures. I actually wound up going to Hobby Lobby and getting like a solid black journal type of book. And it was perfect because I could just read from that and kind of like hold it. Um, and, you know, it looked really good in the photos and I felt like it was a good choice for the ceremony. 
pony. You don't have to write it all out. Of course, you could print it. You can print it smaller and then tape it in there if you don't want to write everything out. That's actually what I did, but um, I wouldn't recommend doing a phone because it just doesn't look that good. The only thing that really had to be changed for doing a gay wedding was that we, um, you know, obviously there was some verbiage like the pronouns that we use, like I now pronounce you husband and wife doesn't really work. So we used instead of that, we did I now pronounce you married. And I feel like that sounded pretty good. At the end of the ceremony, I just said, you may now kiss the bride, even though, you know, there was two brides, but I think everyone got the point. That's definitely gonna depend on what the couple wants. And that's another thing I'm saying, like, just talk to them and find out what they want. They may not know every little detail, but I feel like they'll know most of what they do or don't want. So that's why it's good to kind of have that initial conversation about everyone's expectations. Another thing that I think that you should keep in mind as the officiant is that it's not about you. Like it really doesn't have anything to do with you. You're there basically to make sure the ceremony goes off without a hitch. You're basically there to make sure everything goes smoothly and to kind of be that like emotional support person for the couple that's getting married. If you get too caught up and you start over preparing and obsessing over it, it's not going to flow well and you might get tripped up if you messed up on something. I definitely messed up on something during the ceremony, but like no no one knew because they were all looking to me to lead them through the ceremony so I wouldn't recommend you know getting too flustered about it if you do mess up because more or less this is probably someone's first time getting married so they have no idea what to do and you know they're looking at you to talk them through this process. Another tip I have is to know the order of who is going to go first for everything and then stick to that same order throughout the ceremony. So um, in our case, one of the brides felt like she wanted to go first because she said that she wanted to read her vows first because she said she was going to cry when the other bride read her vows. We let her go first for that. We let her go first for, um, you know, putting the rings on. And, you know, we just kind of stuck to the same order throughout the wedding. So you could definitely um, ask them who wants to go first. You could have them like play paper, rock, scissors or something before the wedding so um, I do recommend knowing who is going first before you start the ceremony. Another job that you have as an officiant is to make sure that everybody knows where to go, where to stand, and that they do have the rings and that they know how to put the rings on. You can recommend that they practice before the ceremony, that they feel comfortable with, you know, putting the ring on the opposite hand. It can get a little confusing, especially if you're, you know, facing separate ways. So just kind of make sure that everyone is on the same page with that. If there is a specific thing that you want to happen during the wedding, like for example, you want um, there to be a ring bearer to come up, you know, you need to guide them with instructions of, you know, will so-and-so please present the rings at this time? Um, you need to be able to kind of figure out who's doing what beforehand. As far as removing the religious components, um, there wasn't really a lot that we had to change. We just didn't, you know, do a prayer or anything like that. We didn't do it in a church. There's obviously a lot of trauma related with like a lot of gay people who've gotten, you know, you know, shunned from churches and they don't necessarily want to have to think about religion on their wedding day. And I certainly can't blame them for that. But all I really did was that if I had, you know, some specific verbiage or wording in the ceremony script that I was using, I went ahead and just kind of removed that and put in something that focuses on the beauty of the relationship and the couple itself and not anything else besides that because more than likely they just want to focus on their love and their romantic interests and you know overall you know I think that most people on their wedding day are pretty nervous and excited and they just want to get through it so you know as a good officiant your job is to just make it as simple as possible for them make it fun you know you don't have to be up there like really stiff you know you can laugh you can you know kind of go off track a little bit but at the end of the day the reason that people People ask you to do it is because they thought that you would be good at it and you know there's some comfort in knowing that about yourself. Now as for the script, overall I stole parts of scripts that I liked and put them all together. Um, in the beginning I had some wording about the couple that I wrote myself just kind of reflecting on their relationship and my friendship with them and kind of how they've grown as a couple and how I've watched them you know come into this state of life where you know they're better together than rather than apart. Um, so I had a little bit of speech at the beginning of the wedding and then after I said what I had written I read a poem and then after my poem we um, had a little bit more wording and then we did the vows and then after the vows of course we did the rings and overall you know it was a pretty smooth ceremony there's a lot of orders that can be moved around and you can change things but I recommend like following a general script and then taking out what you don't like and then maybe adding in some things that are specific to the couple themselves 
If you are writing something from the heart, I recommend that you say out loud a couple of times what you wrote because a lot of times when you write things versus um, when you're actually saying it, it can sound like kind of awkward to say it. So you wanna kind of craft something that flows well when you're speaking it because speaking things and then reading things are two very different things. And you know, you want it to sound genuine and from the heart. I really don't think there's anything that I would change about the wedding that I officiated. It went really well and I feel like, you know, just talking to the brides and knowing them well and just loving everyone that was there really did play a big part in making everything go smoothly. But I would say, you know, prepare the best that you can and be informed, but don't get too caught up in it because, you know, it's really going to be a short amount of time and it's not something to get worked up over. You just want to do the best that you can do and remember that you're there to play a role as a support system and a guide for the brides to get through the ceremony. So thank you so much for watching this video, guys. If you are officiating a wedding or you already have or you've got some tips, you can always leave that in the comment section below. If you felt like I left out anything, I would love to hear about it. Thank you so much, guys, for watching the video and I will catch you in the next one.